Uh, can you hear me all right at the back? I'll try and keep uh, my microphone close. Um, so yes, that's, that's me, Simon Mills. Um, my topic, I'm going to take the garden and the wilder world and bring it inside. So um, the topic is going to be wilding our inner garden. I thought it was quite neat. I was quite happy with that title. Um, and uh, Paka provided the uh, wonderful graphics. Um, as you can see, we're, bit, we're pretty smart at Paka with the, with the artwork. Uh, but it's really nice, isn't it, to think of a garden and all the things that are good about gardens and then take them inside. Um, they did ask me to talk about myself a bit, but I thought I'd get it out of the way in the first slide. So um, on the top uh, left-hand corner, it's where I grew up in a New Zealand fruit farm. Uh, I moved across the world to, and did the medical sciences at Cambridge. Uh, and so ever since the beginning, I've combined an interest in plants with an interest in medicine, and that led me to using herbs as a therapy, and I picked up that, uh, as you saw a long time ago. And so that's my practice in Exeter on the bottom there. And I've been working in Exeter as a practitioner since 1977. So my big goal is to get to the half century, which is not that far off. And then uh, I might start setting back a bit. On the top right, you can see what, what I looked like once upon a time in uh, Cornwall, because after my graduation, I thought I would take a few years out, ended up in Cornwall running a herb nursery. Um, and you can see why that was a mistake, because on my either side are the average Cornish. Uh, and there I was looking like a willow and my back has never recovered. So one of the reasons I don't have a garden is because I can't dig anymore and I have to do everything in pots. Um, the herb interest really began properly then and on the top right is my practice in Exeter and I dispense herbs to all sorts of needs. Uh, and on the bottom right, you'll see what's happening next week, which is we're having a major conference in London uh, called the Integrated and Personalized Medicine Conference, three whole days and I'm talking on two of them. I'm self-care lead of the College of Medicine and my big interest is in introducing simple home remedies, including herbs, that people can use for themselves without having to trouble the doctor. And you can believe me, the doctors would be delighted if you didn't trouble them uh, at the moment. So that's me out of the way. Um, I'm now going to take a dive, if this will work. Come on. There we go. That should say that doesn't that should read our innards, but for some reason, the uh, <laughs> is turned is turned into a pub. Uh, so for those of you who can't remember what your innards look like, that's it in a sort of nutshell. Can you recognise the bits of it? Um, so you've got the gullet coming in from the top, and you've got the rectum going down at the bottom. And in between, there's a massive processing plant that goes on. Extraordinary. Very intelligent, by the way. He's got his own brain. Uh, brains, little, little uh, concentrations of nerve fibres in your abdomen. And they make their own decisions. So if you had a car accident and had your brain... Uh, d d d d um, uh, damaged, you could still digest because all the decisions are being made by these local guys down here. So it's a very intelligent self-organizing system and it basically turns your food into poo but in the meantime of course you get hopefully lots of benefits from it. Now in the middle of there you'll see and again I'm waiting for the magic button. Am I pressing? Where should I press this? Ah there. That's what I'm calling the inner garden. It's, it's not my own invention. This is the microbiome when you saw the, hopefully you might have seen the uh, exhibitions upstairs. The microbiome is, we, we learnt about it at school, a place where lots of bacteria live. We now know that this really makes decisions for us. It's about 10 times or as many cells in that little patch there as in the rest of us and about 100 times as much genetic competence. So it really has the ability to run things. And believe me, it does. We really do have to look after that. And that's what I'm, for this evening, calling our inner garden. 
So some of you will know some of these terms. Uh, these are what I'm calling your inner garden essentials, the tools that we need. So you know about probiotics. Let's hope that works. Yeah, it's working. Um, mostly we think of this as yogurts and fermented foods. And what we're doing there is we're adding friendly bacteria to the garden. And so we can think of that. Come on. Please speak to me as the seed. So we're adding seed to the garden. Fair enough. Prebiotics, that's the food that we use and hopefully use uh, that nourishes the microbiome. So it's the grains, it's the cereals, it's plant foods generally, and as I'll point out later, spices um, that uh, come in uh, to this uh, conversation. And that we can think of as the soil. So we've got the seed, the probiotics, the soil, the prebiotics. Does that help anybody remember the difference between the two? Now we've got something here which is a bit new, postbiotics, uh, which is a sort of a new kit in the block. And essentially, these are factors that the microbiome themselves generate as a result of metabolism and which do good. So they're not pre, they're not pro, they're postbiotics. And we can think of that as compost, or as the Americans say, compost. Uh, but the question then is, what is it? And here we're going to have a little fun. So this is um, our microbiome. It's not, that's not what it looks like. Um, that's just somebody's guess at what it looks like. There's a trillion or so cells, so you can't even put your head around that. That's our gut wall. So that's basically the wall between us and what goes on in the digestion. So think of that as the sort of barrier through which food and everything else has to pass to get to the rest of us. So that's our, 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 our friend. We, we need that to do a proper job. And it's very intelligent. It decides very well what comes through and what doesn't. And the microbiome and the gut wall are in total synchrony with each other. They work together. They each support each other. The gut wall actually supports the microbiome. We produce sort of materials that the microbiome lives on, and the microbiome feeds the gut wall and feeds us in all sorts of ways. So that's really well established. So what we then add to the mix, oh yes, and the other problem, but there's the other problem, which is that microbiome can go wrong, often does, and produce toxic materials, which can be really harmful, inflammatory. Many diseases, I just cut through a lot of complexity here, many diseases begin with a microbiome sending the wrong sort of stuff. So we, we need to tend that garden and keep the weeds, shall we say, out. So we now bring in the cavalry, and that's plant foods. And plant foods are the real key to this conversation because what they do, they provide us with these chemicals. We call them phytonutrients. A uh, big category is polyphenol. Some of you may have heard of those. And these are the really valuable things that plants bring other than the vitamins and the minerals and so on. And they uh, really, we, the more we know about these polyphenols and phytonutrients, the more we realize how extraordinarily valuable they are to us, to our health. We really need those plants to do it. People who eat, eat nothing but meat are missing out on a really big chunk of their needs with these phytonutrients. So they provide, they are the prebiotics. We talked about them before. So they actually provide the main nourishment from the microbiome. But the microbiome then converts these molecules. So you see, the, then you'll remember your chemistry. But these are big, chunky molecules. They're really large molecules. And they don't go into the body. So you can eat as many polyphenols as you, as you like. But very few of them will actually get into the tissues. And this was a puzzle. People wondered how this could work. And it turns out that the microbiome breaks up these large molecules into small ones. And some of them are called phenols, uh, simple phenols. If you want an example of a simple phenol, you might be able to see a couple of illustrations there. The one the most common one is aspirin, which is a simple phenol that actually comes out of plants originally. And a lot of the things that are produced by the microbiome are aspirin-like. And you may think about it and you think, well, we hear all these wonderful things that aspirin does. 
they almost uncannily parallel the wonderful things that fruit and vegetables do. So if you've got fruit and vegetables and seeds and nuts uh, and spices, as we'll see in a moment, in your diet, you're getting all the aspirin-like benefits you need, plus lots of others. Those are the postbiotics. So the postbiotics are what the microbiome turns our food into and turns them into really valuable products. And this whole process is called crosstalk, and it's the most interesting area of all in what goes on down there. There's this conversation that goes on, and vegetables actually, and, and plants generally, tend to support that crosstalk. Now, there's one other guy who's I'm going to introduce here because he's big and he sits on everything that goes on in there and he's, he's our liver and you know where he is. He's sort of right in the middle. And before anyone thought about the heart, they always knew the liver was the big guy because he's big and he's red and he's right in the middle and he's got the same name when you think about it as life itself. And that's true in many languages. So the liver is, we know the liver is really important. And as we'll see in a moment, uh, it, it really sits over all this conversation and is really important to it. So I'm now going to introduce another player. If she comes in, there she comes. This is turmeric super spice. And you may wonder why on earth I'm wearing a waistcoat in this climate. And this is my turmeric waistcoat. Uh, and it's one because I can talk about turmeric for weeks without repetition, deviation. Uh, and I invented that uh, figure to represent my uh, respect for turmeric. She's really amazing. Um, that's what it looks like when it comes out of the ground. Uh, and it's got something called curcumin in it, which is one of these polyphenols we talked about. And you probably, if you look at your supplements, they'll say, I'm high curcumin. You know, I've, I've got the highest curcumin of all the turmeric supplements out there. Um, but it's a polyphenol, and it doesn't get into the body. This is a big puzzle. About 1% of it gets into the body, which is probably just as well, because it's toxic if it was much larger. So we need some other player here. And that is, it's, well, the first thing the curcumin is one of the most powerful prebiotics we're finding, just on its own. But the microbiome converts the curcumin into smaller materials, and we get the same thing happening again. And we now understand that the real effects of turmeric are probably because of their effect on um, the uh, gut wall they, we use turmeric for arthritis and all sorts of other things. It's difficult to understand that if you don't get any curcumin in your joints, but we get lots of other products produced by the microbiome, which makes the turmeric helpful. And there's a quote I've got here from uh, a professor in uh, the USA who basically says you don't need to get absorption of curcumin to have all sorts of effects, benefits. Um, so it's the microbiome, stupid. Uh, that makes the difference. There are other inner wild gardeners available. Um, so ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, one of my favorites. Uh, and then I won't even begin because we haven't got time to talk about what raw garlic does to your microbiome. But essentially, it cleans out the bad guys and the good guys love it. So think about that. And there's a lovely Ayurvedic remedy called Trifolo, which is actually one of the largest widely used remedies in the world, which is primarily, we now understand, a microbiome tender. So just a quick thought here. This on the left there is the average spice intake of an Indian villager, which when you look at this teaspoon, that's what they normally have. If anyone's been to India, then you know they'll have curries for breakfast. Um, so this is... This is normal consumption of spices. And on the plate is all you need to get really significant health benefits. So we don't need a huge amount of these spices. They're really packed full of these phytonutrients. So think about spices. Eat Asian as a really quick way of uh, sorting out your health. And just finally, uh, we are in the world of biomes. There's dozens of them around here. And there's the whole concept of a biome is really interesting, isn't it? And what we're suggesting here is the gut microbiome is a bit like a wild forest or the soil. We understand that you really need to treat it with, as a complex thing, not as a, not as a monoculture. So you need to be a gardener to look after these things or a ranger. And a quick 
animation here. We've got the planet biome, uh, we have the soil biome, and we have the gut biome. And there's one thing that combines them all as a benefit, which is organic plants. Because in growing your plants organically, you are both feeding uh, the soil, uh, you're respecting the planet. There's a nice quote here from Patrick Holton, the soil is the stomach of the plant. It's a nice circular thought. And we now, un we now understand that organically grown foods have much more phytonutrients than other foods do for the obvious reason that the plants produce them in their own defense. And if they're not relying on pesticides and other things, then they're going to produce more of these valuable commodities. We can think of organic foods as superfoods. And that's almost it. Yeah, this is uh, Pucker's first turmeric fields, all grown organically, of course. Um, and uh, you can find lovely um, turmeric tasting teas. I uh, don't know if we've got some in the, in the room today, but uh, it's an amazing introduction to turmeric if you really wanted to have it in a tea. Thank you very much.